Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. This is my boomstick. Here's Johnny. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Righteous! Righteous! Yeah! I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Good morning, Vietnam! Houston, we have a problem. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Will Spaulding, and as always, I'm joined by Sam Duberger. Sam, how's it going? What's happening? Well, considering there were no adjectives to describe me today, You're doing um, horrible. Yep, I'm I get it. doing horrible now. Thanks. Uh, um, the writer's room was just not. Well, you know, we took, we took last week off for yep. you know, a variety of reasons. One of them was because of the writer's strike. That is in full swing. Yeah. At TFN headquarters. Oh gosh, it was brutal. They set up. They set up picket signs all around, all around the uh, the the campus. And um, yeah, it's 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 a serious issue. Um, we're scared for our lives, but <laughs> but uh, but we have these scab writers. You know, that's the term scabs um, that we're on the <laughs> bank to write. And I mean, it shows because they can't even give an adjective to describe no. me. No, they couldn't come up with one. They sat there for hours. I was supervising, uh, and they just couldn't. It's like, come on, guys, and they just didn't have anything, honestly. Oh, miserable, miserable. How are you, yeah. Will? I'm, uh, I'm doing great, actually. I'm doing phenomenal. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a great day. It's, uh, it's starting to look a little bit like fall, which I love. So, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. We were just speaking off air, but we're we're hitting. Uh, what, what would you call this season for movies, Sam? I, I guess we could we could call it Oscar season, we, awards, movies, serious. Uh, yeah, yeah. We you could just call it good movie season. Yeah, good movie season. Yeah, this is where we hit a stride. Um, this is where uh, this is where we like to be. You know, you uh, you see a couple of mediocre movies in the springtime, and then you late spring and then you see uh you maybe see one or two good ones during the the summer but uh now we're hitting uh the uh the the time of year where you might you might see a great movie at the movie theater yeah um it's kind of like hunting season it's like it's it's like deer hunting you know you go out to the stand you watch for a while and then you might come home with something you might not but it's exciting. I recently got a AMC A list Stubbs A list really? subscription. Wow! Congratulations. Well, see, I wasn't gonna do it because it's like a contract. Like it's a minimum commitment of like three months. All right, but I'm going to the theater so much because we're actually seeing movies that are coming out and we're excited about it in a theater not on netflix which is also crazy uh, but i'm paying like 13 dollars after all local municipal taxes for a Sam, movie ticket. let me know it next time you go to your theater ask if they have a student discount at amc they do at a cinemark here another big company wow okay i would add because it's it's like three dollars off my tickets really yeah wow it's worth it's worth at least asking yeah it is it is i well i got the subscription because it's like it's like 22 bucks after tax and i figure you only the subscription is three movies a week yeah that's crazy so like 12 movies a month and at, Which, tw- at a price point of $22, all I would have to do is go to at least two movies a month to make it worth fine. it. Yeah. You're it's making like, money after two. Right. So to me, it's common sense. I'm waiting to see what loopholes I've stumbled upon, you know, but uh, I will stumble upon, but who knows? There's other perks too, like uh, free upgrades on popcorn. Um, <laughs> so like you pay for a medium and you get a large, 
that's not bad at all either. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, but I haven't seen a movie with the app yet, so I'm gonna I'm gonna see how that goes. Yeah, yeah, cool. You have to you have to update us, us next week uh, or whenever. Um, <clears throat> kind of got uh, we, we got a lot of a lot of segments tonight. I feel like Sam, we got. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with some actors. I'm gonna just a light amount of industry news. I only have one bit. We have a movie of the week and then some recommendations at the end. Um, and I suppose we we can uh, we can tease what is said movie of the week. This week we're talking about the eyes of Tammy Faye. Tammy Faye, what'd you do? Hello, mother. This is Jim Baker, my husband. <laughs> It's all part of our mission to help people. Anyone who's hurting or they feel like they've been left out, God has planned for us. What did he tell you to do this time? Yeah, we got uh, the eyes of one Tammy Faye. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll get all into that uh, in just a little bit. But for now, Sam, I gotta ask you licorice pizza. Did you see the did you see the trailer? I did. What are your thoughts? Um it looks odd. Um not what I was expecting. Not what I was expecting at all. I wasn't aware that Philip Seymour Hoffman had a child. Um but <sighs> here's the real winner. And this is the only reason I, I, I give a damn about this is, uh, well, it's not the only reason. It's, it's a Paul Thomas Anderson movie. I mean, it has a... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I know who that is. Uh, uh, Tom Waits. Tom Waits is, uh, is, is, is showing up. Um, I figured you might be excited by that. that this, is, this is the only reason. Because, you know, Tom, he, he hasn't released an album in like 10 years. And all I... <laughs> All we get to do, he, he's very reclu reclusive, right? And the only thing we get to see him in is like the odd random movie every once in a while now. And so I guess this is what he does. So I'm very, I'm very excited, mostly not just because of weights, but because this is a Paul Thomas Anderson movie um, with Philip Seymour Hoffman's kid, Cooper Hoffman, uh, Sean Penn, Bradley Cooper, Benny Safdie. All very capable, yeah, talent, deeply talented um, actors, and uh, this this uh, this lady Alana Haim, um, who I'm not really familiar with, um, but she she's the lead, I suppose, um, and it looks it looks odd, but it, it, and kind of offbeat, but. Um, but as we've discussed on the show, that's the genius of PTA. Right. Is there's nothing really distinctive about his tone. He's incredibly versatile in the types of stories he tells. Um, you could tell me this is a PTA movie. You could tell me this is a, uh, I don't know, uh, like a John Hughes movie or something. Um, and I would believe both of those. Um, he's just so versatile. So yeah. uh, wh what are your thoughts? I I got two kind of two main ones. One you might you might have said it. It, it looks really fun. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, his previous movie Phantom Thread, not I'm not gonna say that source material was the most entertaining thing in the in yeah. the entire world. Uh so it's nice to see him doing something kind of fresh and new to him. Um that looks like he had a ton of fun making as well. Uh, maybe he's slightly embodying Boogie Nights a little bit. Uh, it also, <clears throat> Sam, I'm not sure if you've seen this movie, but it's a, it's a great one and you should check it out. Uh, Cameron Crowe is almost famous. Mm. Uh, looks very similar uh, to that as well. Someone kind of coming of age in, a, in the entertainment world. Um, okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, this this just looks this looks awesome. Love the love the color palette. Looks like a lot of wacky kind of out there performances. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
especially from Bradley Cooper. I mean, he's yelling and screaming even in the trailer. So that, that looks right. awesome. Uh, right. Yeah. This looks really cool. Excited for excited for licorice pizza. I, I don't know if I've ever asked you either, Sam, what, what do you think licorice pizza could mean? Uh, it's a metaphor. Uh, no, I, I, I mean, that's tough to say. I think, uh, it probably has something to do with the fact that you're putting candy on a different type of junk food. Um, a wacky combination, perhaps. Perhaps a wacky romantic combination between two partners. Um, that would be my best guess. But other than that, I'm not sure. What do you think it means? Uh, that'd be a good guess. Uh, something that doesn't mix well. The only thing I, I really hope we stay away from is uh, somebody says, y'all are such an odd pairing. And then one of them says, yeah, like licorice and pizza or something like that. I really hope they don't. I hope, I hope they don't flat out say it because I thought that. But Oh, I, I, yeah. I, I pray to God that we don't have a roll credit scene roll credit. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, where, where the title of the film is actually said um, yeah. because that's always kind of cringy. Yeah. Most of the time. But uh, yeah, we're very excited for Licorice Pizza. Just another um, very exciting looking uh, project that we have coming at us this fall. Um, yeah, should absolutely. Be good. It looks awesome. Well, that's, uh, that's really all the industry news I had, Sam. Uh, do, you, do you have anything? Uh, no, I do not. I have nothing of note. Kind of slow week. That's all right. That's okay. Um, Sam, I, I want to kind of, I forgot last week I had three actors for you and then it just slipped my mind. Um, we're going to return to our, our little game, uh, where you can see three more movies from this person. You can keep one person's filmography and then you can delete filmography of another. Mm. Um, and these are all people who are either retired passed away or definitely in the latter stages of their career so we're just gonna we're gonna bend some rules here sam you can just you can resurrect or bring out of retirement whatever all right okay okay uh the one that is in the latter actually you know we'll just tie it right in i'm, I'm gonna say uh we just you mentioned cooper cooper hoffman i'm gonna say his father yeah. is, uh, is one philip seymour hoffman mm. Um, someone in his latter stages of career, Gary Oldman, Oof. and someone who is retired, bring them back. I'm gonna say Jack Nicholson. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, hey! Um, you gotta, you gotta let one do three more movies. You gotta say I'm keeping that one, and then you you have to you have to chop one. I think I know what you're gonna say, but I'm. Uh, you know how much I admire all of those guys. I do. Uh, I, I chose them for a reason. I think uh, I think I gotta keep Nicholson for a variety of reasons. So you're gonna keep him. Uh, I'm gonna keep him. I don't think he, Jack has nothing further to prove. Um, okay. Everyone these days is giving, you know, they see him show up to the occasional Lakers game and he's about 200 pounds overweight. <laughs> and he's eating a hot dog and flirting with the, uh, the arena staff and yelling at referees. And everyone's like, how could he let himself go like that? It's like, he deserves it. He doesn't. Hey, old guys, come on. He's got nothing. Like, what do you want him to do? Like, what? Like, he's had his. He, Bucket list too, bro. Come on. <laughs> the bucket list the greatest movie ever made yeah okay i'm trying Once he hit that it's like jack you can be done like you have nothing left to prove right? you've, you've hit all the items on your bucket list okay there it is so um yeah no i don't <clears throat> i think we should uh we should keep nicholson i yeah, think cool. you already I think, surprised me I, I figured you would have said give him three more but really I don't know. I just, you know, you got Cuckoo's Nest in Chinatown. I figured you'd think maybe there's another one of those if he makes three but, more. But Nicholson has made some some terrible movies. Oh, as well. I get it. I know. He's got some thinkers. 
And like, if I kept him going, I don't know what kind of, I wouldn't trust what kind of projects he would take on. Okay. I don't, I don't trust that. Um, now, here's the thing. Gary Oldman is a great actor and still, in my mind, highly underrated. Um, when we talk about the greatest actors of all time, but <sighs> I don't think like there's not one Gary Oldman role that I see. And I think, yes, only Gary Oldman could have done that role. I think it, I think there's roles that Gary Oldman has taken where I think only another great actor similar to Gary Oldman could have taken that role. But there's no Gary Oldman role where I'm like, it could only be him. So unfortunately, I have to kill Gary Oldman because Philip Seymour Hoffman has movies. Uh, Sam, movies. I just want to let you know, you are saying goodbye to such films as RoboCop 2014. Oh, no. Oh, Kung Fu no. Panda 2. You, you're never watching those again. Gary Oldman was in RoboCop 2014? Yes. I had no idea. Oh, no. I know. I know. Oh, no. Okay. The Fifth Element. Oh. <laughs> oh. Air Force One is a... Ah. He has made some questionable... Yes, he definitely has. ...decisions. But, you know, he is, um, he is a true actor in that he... Uh, he stays active and he takes whatever is offered to him, it seems, um, which I appreciate. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I have to I have to see what else uh, PSH ends up doing. Um, he, he would probably do another at least another collaboration with uh, PTA. And, you know, that'd be amazing, of course. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What would you do in my shoes? Um, gosh, this one's tough. I think, I think I would actually mimic exactly what you did. Mm. I, uh, I think we we didn't see the best of what. Um. Philip Seymour Hoffman was capable of doing. Mm -hmm. So I, I would love to see what else he would have. I think we have mm -hmm. seen the best of what Nicholson is capable of doing. I think we have seen the best of what Oldman is capable of doing. Yeah. And I think of those three, Oldman is a top 20 actor of all time, but Nicholson and Hoffman are probably top 10. So I, I would, I'd mimic you. But that's tough. That's a tough cut, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, and I would clarify that, you know, Oldman is not replaceable in and of himself. The thing about him is that he's such a chameleon that he yeah. can play any role. And there's certain actors that are better at certain roles, obviously. And Oldman is just the ultimate utility actor. I mean, he can play anyone. Um, so I think there's probably 20 different actors that are capable of taking on the role, the 20 different greatest old men roles, right. you know? Um, so I guess he is replaceable in that sense, but by a bunch of different people, I would say. Um, and that speaks to his talent. So yeah, those are my final answers, I guess. Yeah. Um, that's tough though. That's pretty brutal. Um, I'm going to have to think of some hard ones for next week. <laughs> yeah, man, do it. I mean, that'll, cool. that'll be on my mind all week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. It, in the meantime, Sam, should we get into, uh, Tammy Faye? Yeah, let's get into Tammy Faye. And the eyes of her. The eyes of her. doing anything wrong, though. Is that a question? Tammy and I are undergoing the most vicious attacks. Serving God don't feel like it should be a money-making opportunity. You know, when I saw that clipping with my face on it, I thought for a second that you were proud of me. 
or Tammy Faye. You follow blindly. In the end, all you are is blind. Yeah, Tammy Faye. The eyes of Tammy Faye. <clears throat> Sam, uh, I guess just give me your anticipation for this movie to start. Anticipation plus, plus a little background, what, what, what have you. Mm. And then you just know, get into some general thoughts, too. I remember talking about um, the trailer when it first dropped on the show, you know, several months ago. And uh, I remember thinking, man, Jessica Chastain is absolutely unrecognizable in this. <laughs> and uh, she is. She is both vocally <laughs> and appearance-wise. She is incredibly unrecognizable. Andrew Garfield is slightly recognizable, but the way he plays his character... And um, the aging techniques that they use in the makeup room throughout the film. Um, I mean, that's, uh, he also inhabits his character. So um, I was anticipating some really, really good performances. And uh, that's pretty much what I ended up getting um, from Tammy, Tammy Faye. I think, uh, I think I was also anticipating kind of this typical sort of uh storyline um that we see a lot um and that's this sort of uh you know setting out to do good and then um being swept up in fame and uh commerciality and wealth that yeah, everything ends up going to hell um <laughs> even when you're serving god apparently um so you know i was anticipating that sort of typical plot driver and that's also kind of what i got but but the way the story is told and the aesthetic of the film um is just enough so that i think it's interesting enough to exist even though it's telling kind of a the same story um i think it's i think it's really something interesting um what, what what were your anticipations going in? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I kind of have the same ones as you, really. Uh, you know, I'm well aware of uh, Chastain and and Garfield and their other work, and you know, both of them have uh, have some great performances under their belt. Uh, Zero Dark Thirty for Chastain and The Help, even, mm -hmm. and then Social Network and uh, Hacksaw Ridge for Garfield. So they're you know they're both established very very talented actors and then uh you give them these uh these characters who have who have so much story you, you just figure that you're going to see some awesome performances uh so i was really excited for that and uh i i've probably said this on the show before but lo love a good scandal uh mm. all scandal content is awesome so th this was uh this was kind of right up my alley uh plot wise yeah, uh, I, obviously way before our time, so I didn't I didn't know really anything about it, which was cool too. I kind of went in cold, uh, went in blind, I should say, uh, on uh, narrative narratively uh, for the for the movie. So that that was interesting too. I almost, I got to kind of learn as the story was going, which was cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I was uh, I was pretty excited for this, honestly. Um, I kind of built up quite a bit of an anticipation for myself. Uh, which which might have might have been a bad thing. I don't know. We'll, maybe we'll talk about that too. But uh, I don't say, just go more into uh, into your general thoughts. Yeah, I think like Literally. I said, the the uh, the acting here is phenomenal um, from the two leads mostly. Yeah, um, uh, this movie is uh, quite a bit funnier than than you would expect, um, and it needs to be too. Yeah, I would I would say so. I would say that it's it is funnier than it needs to be. Um, but because there were moments in the theater where people were laughing like out loud, um, and you know, frequent enough that I would remark on it. I would, you know, if I were to guess based on the trailer, I would classify this as um, perhaps a drama. But uh, you uh, you sit through it and you're like, man, this is this is funny. Yeah. And a lot of the humor actually mostly comes from uh, the absurdity of what the characters are arguing about. Actually, some of the funniest moments in the movie are when the characters are having really angry 
and occasionally violent outbursts at each other. But what they're arguing about is just so funny and so preposterous that if you take a step back and put it into perspective, it's 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 laughable. Um, so that's really where most of the humor comes from. And that's why it's so strange. And, uh, you know, maybe that's what the director was intending. Maybe that's what the screenwriter was intending. Um, but yeah, I would agree. I think it is funnier than it needs to be. I will also say that while it is um, pretty engaging throughout, I was never bored. Um, I was pretty attuned to the story the entire runtime. Um, it still does feel quite long, um, even at, I think it's only two hours, seven minutes. It feels yeah. longer than that. Um, it really drug on. Um, the third act was not. It does uh, not wrap up quickly. Does not wrap up quickly at all. Um, and we can get into that later, but yeah, really, I was um, enamored by Chastain's performance. I thought it was phenomenal. Uh, I loved uh, the Minnesota accent. Yeah, more um, Minnesota movies too. I'm <laughs> great I, state I, people. Yes, yeah. Well, you know, it's her accent was not the worst I've ever heard. Um, it was. It was it was characterized, sure, but you know it was it was a little more subtle and a little yeah. more well done, um, which I appreciate. It wasn't full Francis McDormand. <laughs> I knew you would mention that, but it was it was it was close. So I, you know, I liked it. I yeah, liked you got you got to lean into the bit. You got to lean yeah. into the O's and uh, oh, oh, we just need to serve God, uh, and the short Oz sound, God. <laughs> oh, I love it, love it. Uh, yeah i'll get into my general thoughts a little bit too sure um you know i i did enjoy this movie i, I did i mostly the two performances the, t the two leads um mm -hmm. and a lot of their scenes that their solo scenes together were awesome uh it's this movie uh you know we're all we're all very familiar of the biopic genre um, I think in every person's movie watching career, there comes a point, it's different for everyone, where they, they get a little tired of biopics. Mm -hmm. This movie might have been it for me. Um, yeah. The, you know, going into a biopic, you know, there's going to be uh, some montage moments, montages. I think the montages are horrible in this movie. I think that's the worst part of it. I, Sure. I just thought they were awful. Um, yeah. Could have removed all of those. Uh, it, I wish it were micro, and it's very macro. Uh, you know, we're telling the whole story of Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, which it, which I just think is is fine. But for me personally, I would have liked something more focused. You know, tell us a story of how after they come to fame, tell us how they went under or tell us a story of what they were doing in their heights or when they were just starting out. I don't, from, from first meeting all the way till uh, essentially Tammy Faye's last performance. I, I just, there's too much there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I would just say my, my two biggest complaints is, a lot of biopic tendencies that aren't the best and that it was way, way too broad, um, which I suppose is also a biopic tendency. So maybe that's just my, my one complaint is that I was uh, a little tired of the biopic in this movie. Um, but it is still a well-done movie. And I'll, I'll still give it a, a good star rating at the end of this. Um, yeah. But just a, just a few complaints is all. Well, you know, on the point of, of um, the fact that it is broad, it, you know, it perhaps is a little overambitious. Um, and I think that's true. I do. Um, and that's, that's, I think that's a larger complaint about the biopic genre generally is that you're, you're trying to cram 30 years into two hours. Yeah. And that's just movies like that are really hard to appreciate um, or they have to be done really well. And uh, 
that's always going to be a problem. That's always going to be difficult. Um, but I think for me, I respected the ambition behind it uh, to begin with. And I wasn't too offended by um, the way it was paced. Um, and so it didn't bother me too much. But I can see why that's a complaint, certainly. Um, I also think there was kind of a a lull early on um, when we first meet Tammy Faye and Jim Baker, when they first meet, rather. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they're kind of on their early street preaching days. Um, I think there's a bit of a lull there, story-wise. And uh, that can really drag down the narrative. But, but once they gain a certain amount of notoriety and fame just like any story once they gain a certain amount of notoriety and fame then it gets really interesting um and yeah so yeah i still don't know how i feel about how broad of a scope this uh type of I, movie tries to cast i would have just preferred it to be a little more dialed into a specific uh, specific story. I'm, I'm not saying that's the right way to do this because mm -hmm. then I'd have the complaint of I, I'm confused. Who are these people? What, what are they doing? But uh, right. Uh, I would just say it bounced it bounced around so much. A, a year or five years would pass in a matter of ten minutes, and it actually wouldn't even be a uh, a montage. Like just that much time would pass. Right. So, uh, it just. A few minor complaints, uh, but for overall, a, a pretty well-constructed movie with two phenomenal performances. And I mean, like, career-defining, like, that you put this on the, on the highlight reel. Yeah, I am. Um, I see, I see serious non-potential for both of them. Yeah. Um, you, you'll get lead for Chastain and probably supporting for... Uh, probably supporting. For and I, I think I, I would, I would probably bet money on a nom, at least, for both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at least at this point, from what we've seen so far. Yeah, definitely. Um, but no, so that, but the way the amount or the, 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 uh, for how much people change, that's what's so hard about writing a movie like this is yeah. for how much people change, you know, you're like, you're writing Tammy Faye here and then you're writing Tammy Faye 10 years later and another 10 years after so, that. Yep. It's like, that is three different characters right there. You know, you're, you're, you're rewriting the character each time you have a significant amount of yeah. space. Um, and so it's like, I would almost prefer a mini series um, from this just to kind of block it up a little more. Right. Um, and that would probably play into the feeling of TV. Um, I could see HBO doing something oh. <laughs> with this, you know, that would be um, interesting. You know, because I like I like the idea of live action because I know that there's already been a documentary made about this, and um, that's what the film is based on. So I like the idea of doing this live action because um, there's there's a lot of conversations that are obviously fabricated by the writers, um, and it serves the story well. But I think you could really kind of break up the time really well with you know four to six episodes um and i think that'd be cool but i'm not complaining about this movie too much i really really enjoyed it um it's actually one of the best i've seen all year <laughs> <laughs> or that have been released this year certainly right. in my right. mind um but uh i'm sure as we get into the fall that'll that feeling will dissipate as we see more uh, high caliber stuff yeah th this is this is a really solid movie it really is i mean i there, there's not a, there's not really anything in here that i would uh you know the director i'd, I'd see more from the director obviously I, i'd watch more things with chastain and garfield and it, this is really promising it's just I, I think it's it's genre hurts it for me more than anything yeah okay yeah that that and that's not its fault it's just the genre that it, it uh it needs to be in almost. Mm -hmm. um, it just slightly falls flat for me because of that reason. <clears throat> but still, I like I, I enjoyed my viewing experience. I think 
you said you weren't bored at all. There's a couple times where I was like, okay, let's, let's move this along just a little bit. Maybe at like the two third mark, two third to three quarter mark, I was getting a little, when is this wrapping up? It, it was, you know, it was funny. Uh, and was actually, I, I thought super well done was when we get that, we got that first kind of interview type scene with, uh, with Tammy Faye, where she's obviously very later into her career. Um, yeah. Judging by the makeup and hair, which was awesome. astounding. Yes. Uh, Phenomenal. Um, really good shot at winning that one. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and, and I, I had the same thought as you. I mean, I know I'd seen the trailer and posters, but I thought, wow, that is Jessica Chastain. And, you know, you, you can do a lot with uh, makeup and whatnot, but I thought, wow, I that, that's not her voice. I mean, she, she is perfectly cha- altering her voice for this character, which was, which was great too. Right. Uh, so we, we see that beginning, or right in the beginning, and then uh, we, we cut back to her early life. And, you know, it looks slightly more like Chastain and, it's funny mm-hmm. as we progress in the movie, as time goes by, we can almost kind of, you can tell when the movie's about wrapping up because we're getting closer and closer to uh, the, the looks of the initial sequence, the initial scene, uh, the character appearance, at least. Right, right. And, you know, that's, that's honestly what I loved about the makeup. Is yeah, it, it's very it doesn't just serve it, do, it doesn't just serve a logistical function of, like, of like just this know, is what Tammy Faye looked like. Absolutely, yeah, right. Immersing uh, Jessica Chastain into Tammy Faye. It also serves kind of this subtle, perhaps unconscious uh, purpose of you know as she gets further and further into this fame, as she gets further and further disillusioned and disconnected and isolated from yeah. uh, the outside world um, or from common people. Right, she grows incredibly wealthy. Um, <laughs> um, her makeup gets more and more full. Um, it's 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 a reflection of of how how flawed she feels as an individual, and you know she's popping all these pills, and you know as the movie right. goes on, she has more and more makeup, and I think she says at the beginning, like the opening cut, that like she has permanent eyeliner or something <laughs> yeah, like that, permanent eyeliner and like lip lip liner and like it, it stay like it does not like i don't know how you do that like it's a tattoo of some sort or uh an ink um <laughs> yeah but um that's pretty wild um but yeah it is it is um it is a nice way of kind of showing this transformation because you're right early on in the movie when we first meet her and she just looks like jessica chastain you know um just yeah, a little teeth, teeth implants, but yeah, pretty much. Yeah, some thing. teeth implants, sure. But but this girl next door look, and then by the end yeah. of it, she's this mess of a, of a person. But uh, yeah. kind of to get into the character of Tammy Faye, though. It, I want to talk about her, too, because it's an awesome character. I know it's a real person, but it's an awesome character. It's it, it's an awesome character because there's not there's not really a point in the film where uh, you know you're angry at her no you never know, she, she she's not she uh definitely isn't is involved in some sinister things and uh, often she's caught in the middle of things and you know sometimes unintentionally she causes some malicious things but her as a person she's almost the perfect protagonist yes the movie for never root for the movie never challenges you in rooting for Tammy Faye and it's not boring either because you know most movies where you have a protagonist that's um too perfect I would I would call it you know you you, you certain movies where the protagonist is just like this you know saintly figure and uh that's not too interesting you know I want to root for a human being but because Tammy Faye is so she's very naive or ignorant to the things that are going on during the course during the events of the movie it's just you watch it and you can't help but 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 cheer for her even though her good intentions are uh are destroying the film it really uh it reminds me of 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 you know one of the greatest quotes ever ever made which is the road to hell is paved with good intentions um 
I think that can be applied in a multitude of ways here. Uh, but yeah, what are your thoughts on the character of Tammy Faye? Uh, great. She, uh, awesome. Loved it. Uh, she, she's very genuine, um, which, which brings out a lot of humor as well. Uh, almost like, uh, unknowingness. Um, and li like you said, she's, uh, she's not perfect by any means, which makes her uh, a protagonist you can root for because she still tries to, to do the right thing at all times. You right. know, she goes for, through a phase where she is taking a lot of drugs and, uh, eventually she kind of catches up with her and she she ods um she wakes up and her her, her mother is there and she her mom tells her she's addicted to drugs and she goes i didn't I like and she goes I, I didn't know that could happen right I, i'll stop immediately like like she genuinely didn't know and yeah i'm i'm only addicted to diet coke <laughs> um yeah so she's very she's very innocent and uh, wants to do good for everyone around her so it uh she she really is a, a great protagonist to root for in that sense yeah, yeah. And, and jim baker we can kind of transition to him is a great anti-anti antagonist I, I i'm not really sure how to frame him um yeah because we're we're not really sure who this person is all the time um which I think the movie did a pretty good job of balancing. You know, we're 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 trying to figure him out in a couple different senses, right? Uh, just as Tammy Faye is. Um, mm -hmm. So, what what do you think about Jim Baker? Well, yeah, he, yeah, he, um, you know, he he maybe represents uh what happens when you when you know too much. You know, if Tammy Faye represents what happens when you know too little. And sure. uh, and Jim Baker probably represents what happens when you know too much, or you or you want to find out too much, um, because he gets as the as the film goes on. Obviously, he gets more and more invested in their televangelist empire. He's more and more invested in how they make it function, how they can make it work, how he can balance all these things. He gets so far into it that he forgets why he started out in the first place because you know the movie's very sympathetic about it for jim and tammy you know they're the movie makes it clear the only reason these are two pure souls who only wanted to get into it to spread the good news of god um right and the movie yeah is perhaps a cautionary tale about what happens when you economize religion um and like I said, that's kind of a story that's been done before, but this was told in an interesting way. So Jim Baker, you know, represents uh, that kind of human drive to uh, to succeed. Um, so much so that he forgets why he started out in the first place. Tammy Faye suffers from ignorance. Um, <laughs> and and that'll also make you forget why you started Absolutely. Out something. If you just if you just take on this attitude of I don't want to know about it, I don't know anything. Um, and they balance each other out perfectly. They balance out each other out well. Um, and you know Baker is still nicely complicated. He's uh, you know he may or may not be homosexual. Um, yeah, we never really find out. I, I was appreciative that it didn't really give us answers. Right. Right. We don't need a, not everything has to be uh, black and white. Because, yeah, you know, right. the public, the public didn't know either. Yeah. You know, uh, so, I mean, that's, that's what's, uh, I think, brilliant about it. But, um, yeah. Let's yeah. get into the ending a little bit, Sam. Sure. Uh, where did, where did you think it was going? Were you content with where it ended up? Um. Yeah, just just get into that a little bit. Well, my thoughts too after you. Well, the thing about this movie is you know where it's going the entire time. Um, even though, even though there are hints along the way, we didn't really need the hints. Um, we meet this guy Jerry Falwell early on in the film, who's played by this actor named Vincent D'Onofrio. Never heard of him. Um, but, okay. Never heard of him, but he was really really good. Um, is Jerry Falwell? Jerry Falwell. Oh, we're going to see more of him, actually. Um, but yeah, whatever. 
Yeah, yeah, it was disappointing because he 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 kind of nailed it. Um, yeah, he's great in everything. So, um, what else is he in? Sorry, uh, Full Metal Jacket. Oh right, he's the private uh, private pile. Um, mm. Re- oh yes, yes. He's the one that goes crazy. Uh, yeah. He's in a number of number of things. Um, wow. JFK and yeah. Wow. Good for him. Um, so yeah, he was really good. Um, so we know that there's going to be eventual conflict with this guy, Jerry Falwell. Um, Jerry Falwell is the guy who started Liberty university out in Lynchburg, Virginia, by the way. And his, his son was, I think he resigned as the president of that school, like a few years ago because of wild behavior himself. Um, which is really funny. It's, it's something to look into. Uh, but um, yeah, so we know there's going to be conflict with Jerry Falwell, which inevitably happens. Um, and it's just a, you know, a, uh, a range of factors that takes down this, the, the Baker uh, televangelist empire. Um, and so we get this ending that kind of drags on a little too long. Um, yeah. Jim Baker uh, kind of admits to everything and gets arrested uh, for fraud. Um, Tammy Faye is not implicated in any of it. Um, and then she ends up uh, just kind of living her life out of a, out of a town home and uh, continues to uh, be kind to people, you know, that, <laughs> that scene. Where she talks to the kids where she talks to the kids. Yeah. Great, great, great moment. Um, I thought the movie was going to end right at the scene before that. And then, then we get her coming out of her car, like, you know, five years later and she's, she's walking around and she, confronts these teenage boys who are just kind of like cat calling her or whatever and i was like what are we doing here why am i still here <laughs> <laughs> but she it was an awesome moment though it's a it's an awesome moment because it's a, ri- a reminder to the audience that this character really has not changed throughout yeah um and she's still tammy Faye, and she's still tammy Faye, and she's still kind and it's like oh, wants to help yeah you know, I want her to be my aunt or something, you know? Yeah, the aunt that you see twice a year, though. I don't need to see her. Yeah, like, it's it's a lot to be with her. Like, it's obviously just, like, a lot on your mind. But right. she, she's just assaulting on, on all of your senses, right? But, um, yeah, I thought that was a great moment. I agree. And then we have this whole thing where she goes and sings at some festival. And, I would have cut that. I would have cut that I whole thing. I would have cut that. There was no reason. Yeah. To have we, that, you know, we can get that, we can get that invitation. She can kind of be debating it for a minute. We cannot show it, and then you can say in the, in the kind of notes at the end of the movie that she did end up doing the concert, whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah didn't yeah. need the actual display. Although I will say I did enjoy the epilogue quite a. I, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was worthwhile. Well, and you know, I'm a, I am a, uh, I'm a fan of the. Uh, uh, battle hymn of the republic the song she sings i think that's a beautiful hymn beautiful t- beautiful hymn um but uh yeah just not necessary really just not necessary at all yeah so there was <laughs> there was somebody sam in my theater who walked out during the song though and i thought wow. come on man like <laughs> there's a minute left of this movie you, you stuck it out for two hours and you're, thought, you're hey, almost there enough. i thought really come on <laughs> Yeah, but Sam, do you have any do you have any other thoughts for Eyes of Tammy Faye? Um, Wrap up thoughts, anything? Yeah, I think I think look, I think overall this is a wildly entertaining movie. I think it's weird. I think it's odd. It's kind of offbeat, and I think a lot of people would have a good fun, uh, a good time with it. I think a lot of people that. Even people who who don't think they're the type of people that would enjoy this, I think they would enjoy this. I think it's oddly endearing. It's oddly endearing. I think a lot of people, um, 
I, th- I think it would appeal to a large range of people. Um, uh, and I, I, it's just funny. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of a funny movie. Um, and it's entertaining, like I said. So, I, I mean, I'm happy with it overall. Uh, I like it. Yeah, this is this movie's a worthwhile venture for sure. If nothing else, for the performances, for the performances alone, this is worth uh, worth a watch. Um, and yeah, it is fun fun enough uh, to to keep you in your seat and uh, wanting a little bit more. You know, you do get a little bit of uh, you kind of know what's going to happen, but you want to know how we, how we get there uh, in a sense. Um, yeah, it's a it's a worthwhile worthwhile venture for sure. Um, and was a pretty good theater experience as well. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just just kind of clean up its biopickiness. And this is uh, this is one of my favorites of the year, too. Yeah. But, uh, we can get into star ratings if you like, Sam. Sure. Let's talk about it. You, you go first. Go for it. All right. So I'll, uh, I'll give this one uh, three and a half stars out of five. I think this is good. I think it's a good time. Um, there's problems, sure. But. You know, we knew there would be. So, what are you giving it? Uh, I'm a li- I'm a little little lower than you. I'm gonna go three. It's a high three, but uh, I, I mean, you know the reasons why. Just uh, I really I really did enjoy this, but uh, felt slightly uh, rehashed in some senses. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, montages, ooh, those are rough to me. But uh, yeah. this is good. This is a good movie, and. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing how this does at the uh, end of year stuff. You know, we kind of talked a little bit about that, but uh, some acting contenders, some makeup, hairstyling. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. Could you see this? Sne- we got 10 slots this year, 10 slots guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Could you see this as kind of like a 10th pick? Y- yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Okay. Um, it's kind of got that... Uh, christian satirical bend to it that the academy likes yeah be cool um, it'd be a cool 10th entry for sure yeah yeah i i, I i'd be and i'd be okay with it too unless we see like 10, 10 more fantastic really movies. Yeah. fantastic movies coming up yeah so right. um yeah um so yeah yeah tammy faye all right Cool, man. Well, uh, we can uh, we can get into some recommendations if you like. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, I actually have one ready. I uh, yeah. talking about movies that take place over the course of thirty plus years. Uh, on Friday night, this last Friday night, I watched the uh, uh, seminal um, gangster film, uh, Once Upon a Time in America. I had four hours to kill. <laughs> so I, I said, ah, let's, let's do this. And, Wait, so, you know, what'd, you, what'd you do with your extra 12 minutes? Because uh, it's not I, quite four hours. After 12 minutes, I sat there and um, <laughs> pondered. Pondered. Uh, <laughs> nice. It's not quite four hours. It's 348. And it is long. And you feel it, man. But, you know, I enjoyed it. It's not for everyone, certainly not for everyone. I think when we talk about performances, um, particularly performances of complicated characters, De Niro plays probably the most uh, messy character ever um, (laughs) that he's ever portrayed, certainly. One of the most hard to appreciate characters I've ever seen in my life. Like this, this dude is messed up. Um, and, and uh, I wasn't anticipating it. This movie is brutal, and people don't tell you that. But man, it is not a everyday gangster film. Uh, it is a lot. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you can stomach it, um, and stomach a four-hour runtime, I would check it out. Once upon I, I a time in America. Really. Okay. Okay. That that's been to. one that's been sitting on the watch list for a while, uh, and I feel like every time I'm like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, and then I check the runtime and I'm like, wait, it's four hours? I thought it was three. And then, 
yeah. uh, but the thing I forgot to mention was the the true thing that I appreciate about the movie is how it's structured. Um, so it takes place basically in three different periods of this man's life. It's kind of similar to Moonlight. You know, we talked about Moonlight just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and, we did. Yeah. Um, it's similar to Moonlight in that way, but instead of having three clear acts, all of them are layered on top of each other. And we got three different storylines that are all connected going on at once with the same character. Um, kind of playing all at once. So that's really what I appreciate about it over anything. I sure. love the way it's structured. Sure. Good, man. Good. I One question real quick. Uh, what's the better De Niro movie? Uh, once Upon a Time in America or Dirty Grandpa? Ooh. I suppose you could say Dirty Grandpa 2, but... Dirty Grandpa 2... Um, <laughs> I don't even know that of, movie. I just said that. <laughs> kind of beats all of them. Um <laughs> Smile. God, what an idiot! <laughs> Who came up with that movie title? Dirty Grandpa. What do we call this? Uh, uh, Dirty Grandpa. Well, he makes a lot of dirty jokes. Sam, you don't get it. He's dirty, and he's a grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> Phenomenal. Uh, good. Good recommend. Uh, I got a, I got a short and sweet one. Um, okay. The the university library at the university I go to uh, has a has a lot of old movies and uh, a lot of coincidentally Charlie Chaplin movies and I thought you know Charlie mm-hmm. Chaplin probably an awful human being but uh, always uh, toted as a great filmmaker so let's let's give him a shot and I uh, checked sure. out a couple of them uh, saw City Lights and uh, really kind of did dig it a lot um, I don't have a ton of exposure with silent films. Um, but this one was really good. Um, you know, Sam, we always talk, uh, uh, show me, don't tell me, you know, you know, movies show not great movies tell that's good. And then movies that feel those are great. And, uh, well, well you clearly can't tell, so you, you're going to have to show or feel, um, hmm. and it, uh, it does a great job of doing both. So city lights is my, uh, my recommend. Mm, wonderful wonderful i gotta check that out um, cool yeah i'm embarrassed I, that i haven't seen it yet I, I watched gold rush too and found that to be rather uh boring pretty boring but uh i'll, I'll get some more we got uh, modern times on the old docket and uh check out some more too yeah yeah right on cool there we go man uh well real quick uh we kind of said we'd do this um at the beginning of beginning of the show sam we were kind of mentioning all these uh movies that are that are to be coming out so yeah. figure just give a get a little rundown of what uh what we got coming out uh in theaters uh, which we'll be covering on the podcast so next week we'll be talking about the many saints of newark uh that's the sopranos prequel correct mm-hmm. that is correct okay so we got that We're next exciting. week week after no time to die we're uh we're back with Bond. Let's go. Finally. finally. Uh, following October 15th, uh, that's the Friday, uh, we have The Last Duel, the Ridley Scott, Matt Damon, Adam Driver movie. Yep. Uh, looks pretty cool. Um, following week after that, October 22nd, we have Dune and The French Dispatch. Uh, so we'll kind of, we'll probably just push one to the week after. But the week after, we do have Last Night in Soho. Uh, yes. Then, then following again, we have Spencer. Then we have Belfast, then King Richard, House of Gucci, West Side Story, Nightmare Alley, uh, Tragedy of Macbeth. We, we, uh, we, we, hit a nice, we hit a nice stride for a while. Yes. Got yes. A, lot of, a lot of stuff to cover. Um, should be fun over the next couple months. Feels good. It feels good. Yeah, it feels great. Yeah, for sure. But uh, Sam, uh, until next week where we are talking uh, The Sopranos prequel the many saints of newark where can i find you on letterbox uh if you're looking you can find me on letterbox.com slash sjd burger where can i find you will spaulding you can find me on letterboxd at will spaulding and you can find us at anchor.fm slash those film nerds or uh those film nerds or those film nerds on any podcast platform or anywhere else really uh but sam until next time you watch movies everyone Have a great week. Thank you. Ever thought about making a podcast? 
Well, Anchor is the easiest and simplest way to do so. Let me explain. For starters, it's free. There's also creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone, laptop, or computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on multiple platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and much, much more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need in a podcast in one place. So give it a try. (music) 